the subject is so vital. My grade is getting higher. Okay. She co-signing, also signing. It's tricky, is the title. Here we go. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky to solve it, try to solve it, try to think of it. It's tricky. It's tricky. Alright. So, cancel out the ends. Alright. 16. It's easy. Find X. That's not this one, for sure. And I'm pretty sure it's not this one. Where could X be? Oh, right there. Okay. That was easy. It's cotangent. Is this right? But I'm a sports guy. Math is found everywhere. Ask just in time. He knows tricks. I guess you can say I was just in time. Yeah! So you want to learn trig, eh? Yeah. Come on, let me show you. Hey, you see, trig is found everywhere. You see that guy and the wheels on his bicycle? Those are like unit circles made up of triangles. Oh my god. Is he getting closer? What the? What the heck, man? Ball me! <laughs> Who threw that? Cruising for a bruising! Duh! Too high. Ready? Let's go. Omaha, Omaha! Uh, Rockwood! This man, hike! That's right. Why can't I do this? What's wrong? This is too big and good. Well, your cut was at a 90 degree angle. You need to cut at a sharper angle. Angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement with respect to time. Next year, angular velocity was at 360 degrees per second. You need to increase the speed of your spin to get it by the lineman. Here, watch this video. It'll help. One reason is because he cuts with his legs at about a 40 degree angle, on par with angles we've measured from all pro running back, Arian Foster. But what really separates Jordan from the other edge rushers is his spin move. This agility is due in part to a ridiculous body fat percentage of only 3.8%. Jordan peaks at an angular velocity of more than 600 degrees a second. I think I know what to do now. All right, go get him, big boy. Let's do this. You want another rematch? Yeah, I'm gonna take you down now. Let's go. I learned a trick. Let's go. Omaha, Omaha. Uh, Beckeru, Becker, uh, man, hike. Good game, man. Good game. Good game. Good job, game, man. Good job. Yeah, you were yeah. awesome. Good, good job, man. man. I know, I know, I know. I just got my ah! prize. Ah! Hey, Trick's hardcore, man. Oh, man, you got to meet Tan, Jin from the Sun. What do you want to do next? Uh, let's play some basketball. Okay, let's go. They call me LeBron. Oh. <laughs> Ref, that's a foul. Let's go. 1v1. You and me. Let's do this. I'll shoot for it. But we need a ball. Oh yeah, we need a ball. Yeah, ball me. You know, sometimes they call me Kobe. And other times they call me LeBron James. And other times they call me Kevin Durant. Most of the time they call me Kobe Brown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't tell me what to do, okay? Okay. Oh, dude, I, I think the wind interfered with my shot because uh, I'm usually, you know, I'm a sports guy. Oh, that was the wind, okay. I get how it's done. Hey, what rhymes with uh, cash? 
trash? No, it's trash. Whoa, can you show me how to shoot like that? Whoa, don't tell me what to do. Come on, please. My it's simple trick. I called the trick gods come to me a sign. Well, they didn't give me a sign, but they gave me a wiper. Come over here. So we're standing right here at the free throw line, right? And the basketball and the hoop is right here. I'm a pretty good artist, you know. They call me Van Gogh. Okay, from here to the basketball hoop is 15 feet. And we know this because we're at the free throw line. And I'm five feet tall. So the, free, uh, the release of the ball will be right here. And the basketball, or the basketball hoop is a total of 10 feet tall. So now, we can make a triangle out of this. A right triangle. So then, we already know one side, right? We know this is 15 feet. But then we, call, we also know this side because 10 feet minus 5 feet is 5 feet. So this part is 5 feet right here. And then so we're solving for x, right? Well, how do we solve for x? We use the magical Pythagorean theorem. So we do 15 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. Well, what do we do now? We combine like terms so we get 250 equals x squared. We square with both sides to get cancel out the x squared. So we get x equals square root of 250. Now, what is that, you ask? X equals 15.8 feet. Don't ask me how I know, I'm just a genius. And then, so now we know from here to here is 15.8 feet. So that's how you do it. All right, I think I'll give it a try. Okay, let's go, go take a shot. What the heck, man? This trick is working. Whoa, 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 hey, that's my ball. What oh. the man, man? Alright, my bad, we'll go get it. Yeah, go. That's a red card. Hey, have you seen a basketball? Yeah, I was trying to do a PK, but it hit me, so I kicked it up. Then where'd the ball go? I guess we'll just play some soccer in the meantime. Okay, I'll be going, you kick this. Get out of here, man. Oh, wait, hold up, I need, I need my mix. I need my mitts! Come at me, bro! Let's go! Get out of my face! No, no, no! Hey, do you need some help making a shot over that guy? Yeah, he did the, the finger wag. No, no, no! Well, I think he can help you. Uh, I can use, teach you how to use a trigonometry the way Justin Time taught me to. Here, let me show you. Okay, so the soccer player named Gordo is right here. And this is a soccer ball. This is a soccer goal. So the soccer goal, the distance between the soccer goal and the soccer ball is 36 feet. And the height of the soccer goal is 8 feet. Let's try that out real quick. Okay, so we're trying to find an angle that will make, um, that will be made into the goal, but we also have to take into account the goalie, just in time, which is 5 feet. But if you include his arms and uh, high, how high he'll jump, he'll cover about six feet. So we need to come up with a shot that'll be shot at an angle where it'll go over the goalie but still go into the goal. So, show the path. So we probably want it to be around seven feet. So we have to think of an angle that'll work. So let's try off the top of my head, 11 degrees. Um, so let's use tangent because we're trying to find out where it'll hit the goal. So we're trying to find if where it'll hit it. So tangent 11 equals use your opposite, which is x, over your adjacent, which is 36. All right. So multiply both sides by 36. Then you have tangent 11 equals x, and then you multiply it out. And then you get x equals 6.99, which is approximately equal to 7 feet. So the ball will strike right here. So it'll go over the goalie, but it'll still be made into the goal. So you got it? Yeah, I got it. All right. Just so make sure you shoot the ball at 11 degrees, and uh, you'll be good. All right. I want another shot. Man, I fell asleep waiting for you to get better. Here, let me get my chef Boyer and Igma. Let's go, let's do this. Here's the ball. Give me a best shot, come on.
Power trick is too strong. Well, there's the ball. Oh, I guess we gotta go chase it again. Come on. Now keep your eyes on your own paper at all times during the test, all right? Oh, well, that would not be wise. In reality, the likelihood of a reaction happening without meeting activation energy er, is nearly impossible, even less than a basketball flying across my room at any given moment in time. Pre-kill class to see? 